they're drinking mead. Have a shot of whiskey, friend. Like, that's the community I was in. He's standing in a, in a military town. People are kind of being dead. Welcome to Non-Judgmental Podcast. I'm James McGruff. We got Nick here and Leo and our guests, Reverend Lawn Gnome Hollywood and the Angry Gordon. And this week we're talking about so what pulls you right in to metal. What sound gets you? Um, how you guys doing this week? I'm Lawn Gnome? Uh, pretty good. Awesome. Nick, Leo? Good. How about you, Angry? Yeah, always angry. Always angry. Bitter pill. Uh, you know what? What pulls me into metal when I first get into something, man, like just admittingly from being a vocalist for so many years, automatically I'm going to go kind of to, to what the uh, what the vocalist is doing. Like I'm, I'm open, I think, to any type of metal. Like I've always been really, uh, you know, wide with like my genres, but like just that, that sound, like uh, early Faith No More and stuff like that particularly comes to mind, man. I've always liked something kind of kind of different in my vocals, man, not just... Yeah, not just like that metal sound, like the screams all the time. Like I always want, I, I want something different. You you heard this week, man, when I was trying to turn you into some of that old school Faith No More stuff like that. Insane. Not even just the old school Faith No More, but the the new school from 2015. And oh, man. that Soul Inviticus, man. Oh, Lord. He was showing that to me earlier, dude. Man. I love that it's album. Wild. Yeah, man, I love that album, dude. That Cone of Shame song, just uh, and I, th- I think honestly my favorite one on there might be Sunny Side Up, man, just because uh, I, I love how. I love it when they kind of just go different with it, man. Don't even have to be heavy; it's just incredible. But yeah, um, that—that's what pulls me into it. And I think everybody's got something different. And that was the whole whole point this week was to try to just figure out what everybody's into, man. Because I think that when we all turn on an album for the first time or a band that we've never heard, like there's something that catches you. Like you know, sometimes you turn on something in like a minute or two, maybe one or two songs into it, you just go, eh. You know, it just doesn't get you right. right. You know, you, you know, this might not be something I like. On a rare occasion, you might pick it back up later and and find it uh, more appealing. But what what gets you? Like the the vocals has always been it for me. Um, but like each individual has their own taste, so I'm trying to figure that out. And I know that uh, the Reverend here is a big fan of uh, you said stoner black metal. Yeah. Like, what particularly are you looking for when you turn on metal, man? So. You know, I think it's it's sort of a difference if you look at, like, American metal versus European metal. You know, American metal has got that sort of punk sound to it, just deep down in the bones. There's a lot of that sense of community, of moshing, of this and that and the other. If you look at European and you, like, watch ear to concert for someone like a Monomarth or something, you see a row of people just banging together, you know, banging their heads like in a line. I, I saw them. That was very accurate, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just a different way of relating. And so that's why I always gravitated towards that sort of froofy brainiac proggy type shit you know anything i've always had a hard on for stuff that's weird you know i started off I, my first music that i really got into was like industrial you know the came at the end was the one i was really really big into and then it sort of moved on to ministry and the ministry was the first time i heard something that, that was that beat that sort of made my brain tingle a little bit you know that jackhammer was uh was that mine is a terrible thing to taste i love that album and that song thieves just sort of got me right in the gut and then after that, I bought Fear Factory, and that was like my whole intro to it. I had Soul of a New Machine, and uh, uh, D Manufacturer still goes in for me all the time. Yeah, I, I love that album. You don't like <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. No, no, he was doing the. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. The... Huh! Replica. Yeah. You get it. You know, you know exactly what. And I'm so, about. like, you know, I think it, it it always led to when I listen to something, it's got to take me to a place. Uh, the vocals are just sort of like another instrument for me. I don't really listen to them necessarily, like. Lyrics, I have to sit down and process. I don't, I don't, they just sort of are like white noise to me at first. But, you know, it's that sort of feeling, it's that groove, it's that sort of locking in, you know, taking you to another place, you know, that, that sort of beating of a drum, you know, like right. a tribal type feeling to it. It gets an emotional uh, response. Yeah, something that sort of sends you into a trance almost. And, you know, that's why I like that kind of stuff. You know, black metal, it's, it's loud and it's fast and stuff, but they're just such a, a grind that it's almost hypnotic. And you sort of get drawn in, you know, it's like a hypnotic trance. You know, they always talk about trances and stuff in their music. And, you know, stoner metal is the same way. Doom metal, any of those kinds of things. You're just locking into step and sort of losing yourself. But the one I listen to, like, all the time now is Yob. Probably one of my favorite bands. And then uh, that one you let me hear last time? Or was it, like, Ohm or something? It might have been Ohm. Where oh, yeah, you yeah. let me hear that Ohm, man. I, I, I jammed out, like, it's like like a 30 or 40 minute EP or something like that, man. Yeah, all their songs are, like, super long and they oh, chant. Yeah. It's almost like Gregorian chanting. And then Sleep was another one. 
best live band I've ever seen, and probably one of my favorite metal bands, if not my very favorite. Now, have you heard of this band? Because I've already heard them say it's it's got some chan going on. I know I, you're I a big fan. So. Yeah. Well, uh, so, which one, Sleep? Well, Ohm was, so Sleep was Matt Pike from High on Fire, and Alice's Narrows on bass. Right on. And then uh, a series of drummers. Uh, one of them left to become a Christian monk at one point. <laughs> and uh, cool. they started making all their albums, and then they topped themselves after they made Dragon Out or uh, what was it, Sleep's Holy Mountain with Dragon Out on it. Which that's the way I heard it was from Gummo from the Gummo soundtrack when they're riding their those little two gr- grub rats are riding their BMX down the hill and they're playing it, and it sounded like Sabbath because I love that Sabbath type sound. Oh yeah, and you know oh, yeah. uh, they eventually broke up because they spent all their money on LSD and weed and amplifiers and blew their advance. And came up with a 65-minute album called Dope Smoker, yeah, and it, it's just it's just a grinding like. I've actually heard that album. Yeah, and they they bankrupted their label with that. it. You've, you've checked them out. <laughs> yeah, uh, who is it? Sleep. Yeah, Sleep. Yeah, I uh, I actually went to an Amon Amarth concert, and I seen this guy with a bunch of metal patches all over his denim vest. And Sleep was one of them. And I was like, oh, they got to be metal. So I, I just went and checked them out. And uh, Dope Smoker is the album that I went and checked out. It's uh, it, fun, it was man. at the same time, I was getting in with, like, Ghost and stuff like that. Like, you are talking about, like, the old Sabbath metal. That's that metal community I'm talking about from, from you know, across the country. You know, you guys are getting into the same thing or, you know, connecting on that level just because of just a simple patch on a dude's vest. Yeah, I had no idea what it was. I just seen a patch of some guy's vest, and uh, they got to be metal. Let me go check it out. Yeah, I mean that's how it starts, man. I mean, how else do you find out about metal? So when they broke up, it was like a a supernova almost. You know, this the star just busted, and that was like they were like the fathers of stoner along with Caius. And then part of them, you know, Matt Matt Pike went on did a high on fire. Fucking love them. Loud as shit, fast as shit. Yeah, Motorhead style, just dirty animal rock. And then Alice's Nerves, the bassist, went on. To form Ohm, and the current lineup has this guy Emil Amos, who's their drummer, who's in Holy Sons and Grails, which are two of the biggest bands people have never heard. But I guarantee, if you listen to it, it's not metal. Especially Grails is going to be the next Pink Floyd, just like way far out there. And he does the drumming, and so Al Cisneros plays bass, and it's just this hypnotic bass, and he's just chanting along with all these like a lot of it's just it sounds like ancient orthodox greek christian chanting or something this and, is incredible uh, right now like it takes a lot to to go over top of my head i have no idea what y'all are talking about because <laughs> you told me something about the stoner black i'm telling shit. you man like what was my first words i say what like clutch <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i was like i was like not quite man i mean no. i love some clutch man binge and purge you know but i mean i know black just, metal I'm not, I'm not as familiar with the stoner well it sounds like peter is gonna have to give us some metal homework. i mean now the doom metal yeah, I'm definitely a fan. Love oh, it. Yeah. It's it's just so deep, down tuned, and it Very just it, when you when you hear it, you just imagine the <laughs> the oncoming of the end of the world, and you're like, oh, this is that's pretty fucking metal. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just never had a lot of experience. I mean, I used to listen to some old I, I, I Hate God, man. I, I oh. listened, to, yeah, quite a bit of that, man. And I definitely dig High on Fire for sure, but. Like I just haven't went deep into it, you know. Like I checked out that ohm because we, we, you know, you you came up the last time yeah. uh, you visited and popped it on, man, and I, I did dig it. I so. hate God, you got me on a three-hour tangent there. So yeah, you dude. Not have brought that up. Yeah, no, 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 not quite the time not for familiar. it. But. I hate God, but like the Iowa's murder, Holy War, any of that shit. Like, uh, I like the Iowa's murder. You do great like live I'm show. Just, I'm really? just like yeah. really new to them, but you heard the uh, the new album of uh, Slaves, Slaves Beyond Death. Mm-mm. That has a new single. That's on YouTube right now, but I think it comes out, out sometime in August, uh, August I believe. Hmm. I'll yeah, check into that too. But yeah. they were great live. The, their their lead singer is just really charismatic. I guess you know he, right. he puts on a good show. He's, yeah, it's definitely that's, somebody I'd like to see. I don't think that's their original lead singer though. Is not the big Australian guy with the big beard? Yeah, and the long hair and stuff. I mean, that describes like. Nine tenths of metal <laughs> band vocalist. I know the first person in like the Rain of Darkness video. Like he had a short hair almost, and like I would have to look I at it. I think so. Is that short hair? Maybe not. Uh, Damn it. So I'm is it, what's what's that sound that pulls you into that though? Like like it, could you could you specify it or is that just is it just that that atmosphere like that you feel you get? Just tectonic. You know, you yeah. feel like. Tunk, 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 tunk. 
chunk, chunk, you know, just deep in your nuts. Yeah. You just feel that sort right, of right. like tectonic plates grinding against each other. Yeah, and, like 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 a tribal war dance, like you're preparing yeah. for the day. Yeah, like yeah, when I'm when I'm preparing big. for a competition for jujitsu, <coughs> I love listening to that kind of stuff. It just gets me in the mindset. You know, it's like that's awesome. It's just it just motivates me. You know, it's that that chunk. Uh, Goblin cock. That's another one. Sort of on goblin cock. On the on the verge. You have to of, make note. Goblin I'm, I'm cock. I'm keeping where mental it's at. notes. We got yob. We got sleep yeah. and goblin cock. Let, let it be known that you heard here first. Goblin cock. You need to get it in your head. I mean, because ah. I already heard uh, necrogoblicon. Oh, dude, you. I love some necrogoblicon. Yeah. But I've never I heard of goblin cock. Yeah. I, know, I know the angry loves is, the necrogoblicon. Is this more goblin yeah. metal? Oh, there. Or is it just more or less the name? <laughs> it's it's just I odd. <laughs> it's I don't know if I classify them as goblin metal. <laughs> I just love that someone can mention goblin metal, and someone's like, "I don't think I've heard of that genre." It's not. It's not like a debate that there would be something called goblin metal. Is it metal about goblins? Is it metal by goblins? Is it metal for goblins? I'm still on pirate. I'm going backwards like, up the alphabet. But like they are a pirate. Like they 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 live the life pretty much, and they sing the life, and it's. I've heard it. It wasn't too bad. Oh, when I was checking out the uh, the L storm with you, yeah, dude, the vocals on that that was one of the first things I heard. Like when I listened the first time, I was like, oh, this is this is pretty cool, man. I definitely like the guitar sound to it. Right. But then when those those vocals kid again, I mean, it was gang vocals and the whole chant and the whole whole band getting in. I'm like, well, that's fun and the energy's it's right there. So now I got to see them live and tell everyone to listen to them immediately. Like so, I've done pretty good with it so far. Yeah, that's just incredible. They were mentioned on that top 10 device of metal shit but like these sub awesome. and whatnot it is but like I think they took a shot at pirate metal and rap metal and all that shit and like can we all just get along yeah I mean right? that's the whole point of it man it's like you should like I spent years being so judgmental toward all these different genres cause oh, I was like oh I don't like it man turn it off you know I don't want to hear that first thing man but I mean like why why can't I just admit something's fun why do I gotta be an elitist about it I'm not I can't do half the thing those guys do, so you know, uh, whatever the production is of it, it it's so. So you're telling me you listen to internet radio, you no longer, you no longer skip. What do you mean? That skip button. You never, you never use up your six skips. Right? No, I just I, I download uh, like I download a lot of music and I, I check out a lot of things, man, and I give it its due time, um, you know, and I, I I'll pick I'll just randomly pick metal from any genre, like you know because. Something. There's like this uh, French rap metal band called Smash Hit Combo, and I just randomly downloaded an album of it. Man, I actually really right, enjoy now, it. It's, it's, now, are they just it's, from France, or is all the vocals? They're, they're from France. Well, the, I, I checked two albums out. The first one I got was completely the al- vocals were entirely in French, and the second one now, I guess they're they're using English with a few French songs. But yeah, for the most part, yeah, I mean they're from France, and they they did they had all in their language as well. But I mean, yeah, man, it, uh, fun as hell, man. It's heavy. You know, it's it's got some good energy to it, man. It's a good thing, like it's a good thing for me to pop on while I'm out at work, and I got like you know ten minutes, man. I jam a couple songs out, kind of get pumped up, and get on with my day. Like, you ain't it's good tell stuff. Me who, but like, is it a website that you're going to to get the goods? Because I mean, just random places, man. Sometimes I buy it. I just look up what's new. I mean, just you know, sometimes I'll sample stuff off YouTube wherever, wherever I get it. You know, yeah, I ain't trying, I ain't trying to pay for it. Now. Right. <laughs> well, no, I'll pay for stuff. I ain't got a problem. I got like uh, that. I, t- I was telling you guys about that. Uh, that metalcore band, that deathcore, uh, a different breed of killer. I checked out their first album. It was a concept record, man. Loved it, and they broke up. And then they got back together and did a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe for right. the production of their second album. And I put in the money for that and got it, and uh, they actually sent it to me. I think back in uh, into May, man, and I've been listening to that too. So it's a good time. So, but I digress, man. We've had uh, Angry over here on silent for a while. So, what about you, man? What draws you in when you turn metal on? What tickles your nuts? Yeah, what what gives what makes you harder than Chinese algebra? Oh man, there's there's so many different. Uh, you have to pick one. I listen to so many different. I guess you, types of metal. Uh, if I just say metal, what comes to mind? Yeah. What do you think about? Yeah. yeah. Oh, guitar. I guess it just all comes down to guitars. Uh, is it the riffs or and that, the I guess that beginning scream every metal song has to have that, that like like you were talking about Street Fighter that uh, I believe it's called Replica the, uh, yeah you know just that, that, something as simple as that or as uh, like um, let me think of all that re- all of all that remains uh, was it the fall of ideas 
the Fall First of Ideals, that album. opening song, The Calling. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, where when it, it opens that, with that, that like, where it comes out. and they just right off the start, yeah. Every metal song should start out like that. I still love that. Uh, when I saw them back in um, in May at the, uh, um, they were at that a Rebellion Festival I went to. Uh, they played like uh, Air That I Breathe and The Calling and stuff like that, man. It was a lot of fun. I was like, that's awesome, man. It's the second time I've seen those guys. And... Still good stuff to watch. Yeah, they're still, still a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, you gotta see a Monomarth again, or you're a Maybe dick and you case. judge metal. Mudvayne? That's somebody I'd like to catch. Mashuga? Yeah. Didn't we see Mashuga and Roanoke? Yeah, I saw them in Roanoke, but that's when they opened for Tool. When I saw Mashuga, that's that's when they were headlining, and it was right when. Oh. Um, I see that as well. Yeah, I, I think uh, you guys, you guys got out. lucky could to see that one. Um, I didn't get to see that show. I actually saw Tool in Richmond earlier that year. And Tomahawk open for them. Ooh. Yeah, and you know how important that is to me yeah. because that means I saw my favorite singer in the world, mm -hmm. Mike Patton from Faith No More. Tomahawk's that probably my favorite band. side project. Oh, is. my God, dude. Yeah. God just, hates a coward. I, I, half the people there had no idea what was going on. Like, there's these guys out in SWAT suits, like, yeah. banging on shields and, like, just acting absolutely. Just the insanity of noise coming from the stage. And I'm sitting there just in awe, like, I can't believe this is happening, dude. I had no idea. Like, I, admittingly, like, I was so excited about seeing Tool, you know, as a younger guy. Like, I grew up Love, Faith, and More. I was so excited to see Tool. I didn't even, I was like, Tomahawk, whatever. I, I didn't know that it was a patent side project. And I was sitting there, and they were like, this guy was like, next to me, he was like, man, he was like, yeah, I've seen Faith, and More, and, uh, and before they broke up in 95. Uh, you know, I was like, I was sitting there listening to him, and he was like, it's so pretty cool to see Mike Patton. And I asked him, I was like, wait, what? And he was like, that's Mike Patton from Faith, and More side project, Tomahawk. And then I was just like. What? Oh my god, dude! I'm getting half my bucket list right now, and I didn't even realize it. Like, you know, so very, very surprising moment in my life right there. We're taking away from angry though, man. So, so the the, the I gotta the, I gotta admit, the first time I seen with Sugar, I uh, I didn't understand it. I, uh, <laughs> seeing them live and never hearing same, one of their albums. Exactly. Like, the first thing. time I'd seen them. Where where I, where's the chorus? I was there to see Tool. Where's <laughs> What is that? <laughs> it's like, where's the chorus? I, I, yeah. I, uh, what, is this a well, song, or are they just making noise? Definitely. I was getting ready to say that when I saw that Tool and Meshuggah. Like, I was actually, like, unimpressed with Tool, that old bass solo shit that they did in Roanoke, like, where it was, like, probably seven minutes of just nonstop, like, boom, 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 boom. I was really drunk for that part. No, I was up so in the seats trying cool. to enjoy my show, and I'm just like, this is fucking horrible. And bro. knowing like, that area, it's like, you know that there was, like, at least a handful of people in there who were, like, just dazed into yeah. it, like, oh, I wish everyone else understood why this was so good. <laughs> I just I whatever they had because back in the day I had a chance to go see them in, May, in May and I went and saw Perfect Circle instead oh I'd love to see Perfect Circle yeah that was kind of how it was I was like I've seen two I really would like yeah. to see a Perfect Circle man they, they played Passive and like I really like that song even though it was kind of like a single I love Merida Nong go ahead and yeah. say yeah go ahead not metal not metal at all oh yeah absolutely no not no metal. man <laughs> nah man but I mean like you know you enjoy what you enjoy I would yeah, consider them an stuff. alternative rock. Yeah, alternative rock. Alter they're, oh, I would say they're firmly. Oh, all right. So mushroom head, fucking metal. No. Mushroom, mushroom head metal. metal. Yeah. So yeah, they fit into that new kind of metal. industrial metal type Did area. Like, what about Save Your Soul? Yeah, there you go. They're new metal. Okay. Yeah, I would say so. I figured they were metal. I mean, the the guitar is distorted and stuff, but it doesn't have like a blast beat. But then again, I mean, you know that. What is metal? I don't know, man. Like I, they could be considered alternative metal as well. Like yeah. Faith No More was, man. Their early albums, like, but then they had some songs on there that were just straight hard as well. You know. I mean, a lot of people didn't know the harder side of that. They just heard the one song over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's where Mark. That was like the first time I heard Chimera. Uh, um, you speak in my the language. The album. You speak in my language. The first time I heard Chimera, I was like. Maybe 19 years old. I I, I was young, and uh, I, there was one song that I liked, and uh, I just couldn't get to like any of the other stuff. I quit listening to it for a few years, came back maybe a year or two later. I don't know, and, and I just I ha I can't get enough of them now. I don't know. Maybe I was just too young. It was too metal for me. I knew that. 
But uh, Chimera is one of those bands that was too metal at first. It's definitely good, and they've switched up members as well throughout the years, so you get a lot of different sounds, yeah. you know, it's like they'll, they'll keep their bass core sound. You depress me, you know they're not together anymore. I, I know, oh, I know. That's what we, <laughs> we got to talk about. It's man. one of the few bands that's actually like broke up, broke up. Like they, they've gone through members, but they, you know, and they're actually not, not around. Santa Ziggy's though, so... I we did, dude. I, member I saw him at the Norva, Hunter. man. I saw him at the Norva with Fear Factory and Slipknot. Then we had God Forbid and Arc Enemy, and also that first Hate band. Eternal. That's what their fucking name yeah. was. Yeah, that I love Hate Eternal. Dude, that, that drummer, like, in that a show. fucking opening show in Ziggy's was all you just heard was straight blast beats nonstop. I it mean, was wonderful. One thing we can, I think, agree on about Hate Eternal is their lead singer has the biggest fucking forehead in the world. You can they they were at that thing. show that hate that's yeah, what when you're talking about. You yeah. Said, like, yeah. I was like, oh, we could biggest forehead. Mean, no. Eric Rutan. Like 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 think, like he he's did. beating Devin Townsend. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Man. Who I'm not insulting because to me he is like the video for I Devin Monarch, Townsend is is definitely the camera is right here on this kind of angle and it, you talent among gods. His forehead is like a five head. I mean, <laughs> and then his bassist has a tiny face. What, about, like, what about Strapping Young? Yeah, dude, I, I heard them. Um, uh, dude, I love I have not list. listened to enough of them to have a uh I'm just talking pain. about the vocalist. Oh, yeah, Devin Townsend? <laughs> oh, it's bigger than Devin Townsend. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, yeah, dude. Because yeah. Devin Townsend is the guy, Is uh, he's a god among metal. He's got a noggin, just, but it's, it's not the, a yeah, guitar. Yeah, the vocals are amazing, I know. Dude, his guitar work is amazing. His songwriting's amazing. His solo stuff's amazing. Devin Townsend is a god among metal. That is me being judgmental. He is, no, he is, he is top. I asked you to think he about the king of metal tops, the other man. week, and you're like, nah, man. Because he's, he, he, I wouldn't say he's the king of metal, man. God. He gives it as a gift. Okay, okay. He gives it to us as a saying. gift. More he's like a, a prophet than a... Yeah, man. Yeah. He's just like, you know what? This doesn't need screams. I'm going to make it heavy as fuck, though. And it's just melody, 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 man. Ah, oh, man, dude, that last album he put out is just, it's so good. Like, it's making my I head agree. hurt. I want to listen to it right now. That Transcendence, see? Angry Get, nose. getting excited about it. Dude, I'm getting excited. Yeah, I'm I getting just, sweats. I almost just ended this conversation to go listen to it. Yeah, right yeah. now. Like, hey, well, sorry. We might just have to bring it's it been non judgmental with uh, ju- uh, everybody. Hey. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Angry Gordon out. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Gotta go. Yeah. Uh, Opinions are great, but Devin Townsend's better. Dude, Ky- Chimera, though, man, that first, uh, that pass out of existence, man, that was the one that I heard, um, and I'm trying to remember the song here. I'm giving it a quick look up. It was a <laughs> I believe it was too that, uh, for all of us when it first came out. Oh, dude, that uh, last house. There is like that uh, memories and it was like it was pretty much called Split. Yeah. Okay. That was like the seventh song on there, man. That oh, dude, that was awesome. Yes, I know. Yeah, what you're talking that, about. yeah, that off that first Power record. Power Trip was another one. Oh. That was the second oh. record, though. That wasn't that one. Uh, Power Trip was on uh, Impossibility of Reason, which was the one that they got kind of big for at their time and that's the one that had like um, I think that's the uh, first down again and 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 crawl and all those uh and it had that like like mm, had like 13 minute remember. instrumental at the end of it you might be right but oh i'm I absolutely just right disagree. just 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 to be an ass either way you can do that all you want but i'm absolutely correct i got sources uh well, if we're talking yeah, about... Go ahead and look it up for me. I gotta, I gotta know. What was the I mean, first I, album? The was, first album was Impossibility of Reason. I'm looking it up right now. Was the second The reason second album that? is... Uh, uh, the, the, no, I'm sorry. The second album was Impossibility of Reason. The first album was Passed Out of Existence. Okay. And the song okay. I remember the most off that was the seventh track, and it was called Split. Uh, the one you're thinking of uh, with Power Trip, Power Trip was the fourth song on the record. That was Impossibility of Reason. That's the one that had like that long instrumental at the end and everything. Uh, it's the one. It came out in two thousand three. It's like the one a lot of people know about. I think that's the first one you turned me on to, McGruff. Yeah, a lot like of people. A lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as, as far yeah, as, here uh, you go. What'd you find out? I looked up the uh, Pass Out of Existence. Yeah. I suppose it's their first album. Uh huh. Yes. And it's a uh, SP Lit is what you're talking about. Yeah, it was yeah, SP. SP lit split. Yeah. You want to debate semantics with me on song titles? Is we'll there do a hyphen it. In it. No, there's no hyphen. I, it's I just never... SP highlighted then like a small space and then LIT. Hyphen. Yeah. 
highlighted. Like or yeah. SP um, I never capitalized, capitalized then L I T small lit split. Split. S P lit. The next track on that album is called uh Painting the White to Grey. And uh I never knew what he was saying. I just I thought he was saying something about the one, two, three. I had no idea he was saying painting the white to grey. How about that? Oh gosh! Don't get me started I don't on the song what, what metal lyrics you thought were. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other episode. What metal lyrics you thought were what, and how you mistake them. Yeah, you I go. remember kids sitting on Check, the bus. Uh, <laughs> Never knew that. I remember kids sitting on the bus, uh, and, and uh, uh, remember when that Slipknot song was real big when they first came out, Wait and Bleed? Yeah. I'm sure oh, a yeah. lot of people remember that one. Yeah. Uh, they, were, they were the ones going, uh, like, they were like, I felt the air rise up in me. Tell and me you were like, come on, like man. Dude, I mean, it may sound like it. Sound it like does it. sound like it. But like, I, mean, I like, swear to you, even like, knowing like, what he's But saying. even afterwards, even after finding out and it still sounded like it, you still could almost felt indefensible, like, yeah, fucking why not? You still felt that like oh, in your belly, like I was wrong, and I don't want to admit it out loud. Yeah. Video. What? And go listen. To, go to a, a YouTube video of some sugar, and uh, check out some of the the comment sections of, of what they're trying to say. That guy, saying, I believe his name is Jins. People make up their own song lyrics from a sugar song. So you know. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I mean, they do that. Have you actually? Have you actually looked? Legit? Have you looked at the Meshuggah lyrics? Because they're, they're already pretty out there. Oh, yeah, dude. They, they definitely yeah. are. They definitely are. That's a draw for me when well, someone just has bonkers lyrics. Yeah, see, that, yeah, that's what absolutely. I'm saying, too. I like, was saying that the other like, day. It's like, dude, I, I've never, you know, like, I can appreciate the vocals because I, I, I see the need for them in metal, and everybody's always like, well, you know, why why you got these people screaming all the time? Like, I don't see the point in it. I mean, you know, the vocals always accent the music that you're making. So if you're making this abrasive, in-your-face, fast, you know, 180 beats per minute with straight blast beats going, what else are you going to have other than some deep gutturals just, like, fucking rocking your dome? But, you know, I, you I, I, I've, never, I've never particularly cared if what they were singing about had a, an actual point. No, like, I, I, I prefer, I prefer stuff that's about nothing. But what if you don't? This know? guy has the lyrics worked down right here. Uh, there's a Masuka song, and uh, he, I guess, he has the lyrics are. So, do you guys ever listen to? I love grindcore. If I'm listening to like something fast and hard, it's grindcore. And there's the kings of it for me, at least, are Gorephobic Nosebleed. Have you guys oh, heard that? Yes, yes, I've heard the yes. a concept <laughs> album about the Tokyo gas bombings <laughs> with like little. There's a, a track that's just this like s synthesizer noise, and the guy just going lysergic acid <laughs> it's just like that's a track <laughs> like 10 seconds long and then it breaks into a blast beat about jesus time traveling to kill himself and stuff it's like uh skinless yeah i love love that oh yeah, yeah well, that's that, that's a lot of the stuff that it's just straight heavy you can't dude understand i'm not anything. completely unfamiliar um, but like yeah see like see i'm more i'm more on your side of things man i like a good groove and a good chorus and a good content dude. but like i've always been like I, I i don't know you guys know i, I when I sang earlier, when I did vocals earlier for, for bands, for me it was always, you know, like the way I wrote things was just, I, I kind of gravitated toward like more traditional style. And I really like, a, I really like a catchy chorus, man. I like things to be theatrical. And I like when somebody can do something kind of weird and out of the norm. I think that's why I've always liked yeah. Mike Patton so much. It makes complete yeah. sense. Like yeah. being a vocalist, you know, you can appreciate, even if you don't like the vocals, you can appreciate range and you can appreciate like what they're doing and putting their sound out there, you know, but as a drummer, like, you know, Abominable Putridity, anybody? I, I'm sure I've heard them on some compilation. Uh, I mean, any of those, like, not ringing a bell to me, stuff. but definitely just, interested in hearing Being a drummer, that. just, you know, it's nonstop in your face, fast as shit, as, you know, for seven, eight, nine minutes a song. I love blasts. Dude, just, yeah. You straight from blast to, like, triplet double bass. Fucking Tom rolls into the whole shit. Yeah, it's. What about like that's what gets my blood pumping. That's my least favorite thing about metal is blood beat. Yeah, 
Your your and least that, favorite thing about metal is blast beats. I can understand where yeah. you're coming from. It's, it's mine too, man. I, know. I gotta I gotta say, dude. That, here's that, the thing. I can understand where sound. you're coming from, right? Because the, I I love a groove as a drummer. I love it. When I started playing with old uh, old Carl Guthrie, he uh he presented a different type of guitar playing to me, where it's just at at some point in time he wants to go off the wall with the playing. So, honestly, to back him up, the best thing to do would be blast beats. At some point in time, they're necessary. It's like a necessary evil in certain stuff. Yeah, I mean, it takes it away. I get and, it, And yeah. some, you know, when you get into black metal, uh, a, lot of, a lot of these groups out there, it's, it's blast beats through the whole record. I'm not about that. I like to switch it up. But at certain points, they're necessary. Well, I love a record full of them. <laughs> I like it to just sound like you're getting brain damage listening to it. Like, I'm big into that Japanese noise music, too. Like, I love putting that on super loud and stuff. Just if it's chaos, I love it. If it's just, if it gives you, like, heart palpitations and makes you feel really uncomfortable, I sort of like it. You heard it from the Reverend first. Yeah, it's, it feels like the, you There's know. metal for everyone. Black, uh, blast beats, amen. Yeah, just blast beats all day, especially like that anarcho punk stuff, like crass. And I mean, they, they get me hyped just playing them. Half scum and stuff. Well, see, that's just it. You're a drummer. You play them. Like I, I've never had the experience to try to play a blast beat. Like you know, like you, you. I don't know if you've ever seen me on those things, but I'm very simple. I, I can lightly do it, but I can't. I can't do it. I couldn't play anything technical. I can barely hold a beat. You, you on the other hand, like I could see, I could see how it could be fun. I could see how it could be something that would be be uh, considered a skill at what you do but for me like when i hear it like like i gravitate away from it but that's the whole point of this man is to find out you know what everybody likes and and that that that's kind of what we were talking about with the metal homework man like everybody when you know, give somebody something say look if you're not listening to this i love it you should try it out i think the you thing we're missing out. about blast beats is the fact that it gave us anal cunt wait a minute see i didn't <laughs> okay. think about that man like that's, that's... The, that's oh my a god! Great point. You can't take it away from that. Yeah. Wow. And as much as you may hate, I, I feel like the more you hate, the the better they are. The tribute, man. Like I can't tell you that Anal Cunt did not get me to through some hard times in my life, just with their hilarious song titles. Every and every bad night at work, working yeah. working in the back kitchen somewhere, wherever. It did was, you hear you about how that guy terrible. died? You just, you just press. Oh yeah. Play like on isn't that it shit. insane? Yeah. Like, isn't it, like, and correct me if I'm wrong, didn't but didn't hear. he, like, like, dude, like, he overdosed on a bunch of drugs or something. Oh, yeah. And then he went into a coma. So the cops, like, dropped all the charges from all the drugs and shit, and then he awakes from the coma. First song he plays is, uh, You're in a Coma. Yeah, the first <laughs> song he plays is You're in a Coma. And then eventually he dies from, like, what, a drug overdose, right? Yeah, I think it was, like, Xanax and yeah. Propofol. But, like, dude, he literally, like, did something fucked up and, like, tried to kill himself He did some, some Michael Jackson drugs, I think. Yeah, dude, yeah, like, like, real bad. And he died, and, like, they were going to charge him when he came out of his coma with it. But they were like, well, fuck, this guy's never coming out of his coma. So they took him off the charges, and then he and then fucking you, came out of the goddamn coma and was just, like, charge him again. back to being, like, bah, bah, double jeopardy. Like, immediately. Yeah. I mean Seth that's Putnam. that's a sign he Seth had, he had Putnam, more man. to put out. I love that guy. Like, me, uh, did I tell you that me and uh, uh, Devo wrote him a letter once personally, asking him what to do about this girl that irritated us? We were man, I couldn't have been more than sixteen years old, and uh, you know, in the beginnings of the interwebs, <laughs> like writing to Santa Claus. Yeah, well, in the in the <laughs> beginners sure in the, in the beginnings of the online, we okay. were like, hey, let's get on the online here and fucking try to write this guy in emails. So we write him on one. the online. Yeah, on the online, the angry notes. And then we got on there, and we wrote him this letter. And we were like, hey, what do we do about this chick? You know, Seth Putnam. Just figuring, as a gaff, this guy who writes lyrics about, like, you know, beating people and pushing old people off cliffs. We write him a letter like, hey, this chick we know, she's like a real hot topic chick. We don't like her, and what should we do about her? And like, you know, and he was just like, he literally sends back, like, maybe four or five hours later. He's like, if she's pregnant, kick her in the gut. Uh, and because she's a hot topic kid, like, you know, punch her in the stomach. Like, just, like, and the exact Seth Putnam response, you would think. Like, the words kick her in the stomach and, like, make fun of her and, and fuck that chick were all over this thing. I was like, dude, he took time to write back his fans. He's a man a from hand, a different era. With what could, what, what, what could have been lyrics.
lyrics from a song. I was about that to say that is a true he, fucking he story. He could literally just have a. a I'll a get a the random, Debo one to verify. He, could have like a he random probably still can remember it. Lyric generator to just respond to all of his emails. Oh, that's we need an to app reprioritize to artificial intelligence generator. research. There you go. There's an app idea, dude. Right. I mean, you heard it right you here. You know you can reject with the message. Yeah. Reject with an anal cut message. Yeah, reject with an anal cut message. <laughs> Guys, I, I don't think I'm really familiar with anal cut. You've never heard the Ooh. anal cut? Uh, see, you, you've, you've got to have somebody that really just gets you. Just for your track list. I can't even be like, surprised at that man because like they weren't they weren't they weren't ever any kind of commercialized band. They were a band. They couldn't be. I mean, they like, wrote <laughs> they wrote like minute long songs that were like "fuck you, you're stupid" or you know "you should die." You have Down a, syndrome. You have Down syndrome. <laughs> you know. Like this guy from this band's fucking stupid because I hate his mustache. His, like, the three eleven one. Like I, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing man. here, man. They were just they fifty songs on a fucking album, Eerie. all a minute, yeah. minute and a half long. Like a just, bunch of blast beats. Just a ton Throughout of blast everything. beats. Like oh, it was it's horrible. And, and, but and, I mean, oh, it's Mr. so Collins. entertaining. Oh, Mister Collins, you know who I'm talking about. He can do them. Working yeah. between working with him and old Carl in the restaurant. Yeah, I became very familiar with it. I think anybody could sing they, it. They used to walk around the just kitchen. Just no one could get the spirit of the words. Yeah. You have to sing have that kind of pain lyrics. in your soul to sing like that. Or sing like that. Yeah, if you if you want to know more about Seth Putnam, look up like his interviews about how he felt about Cannibal Corpse on YouTube. They're pretty funny. He just bad mouths like uh, Chris Barnes for like a good like or not Chris Barnes. I'm um, sorry. Well, he bad mouths too, right? Yeah, I'm sure he bad mouths everybody, dude. Yeah. He literally was just an abysmal angry drugged out man who wrote some hilarious metal yeah well you should bring up the track list and and read off some choice excerpts of some of the song titles sure just to, just to educate educate the Are audience you talking about anal cunt yeah we're talking about anal cunt uh, they wrote uh, uh, hitler anal, was a sensitive man yeah hitler was a sensitive man as well. even though you oppress women uh you still fucking suck you towel heads i think that's another one like, I mean, it's... I like lit your the, baby on fire. I lit uh, your baby on fire. Beat your you're, wife. You're old. Yeah. Fuck you. That's the title. I respect your feelings as a woman and yeah. a human. Yeah, that's off their acoustic album, Picnic of Love. I actually had um, that... Oh, I love that ...on one. physical copy, dude. Uh, I let a friend borrow it, and uh, it was one of those things where we just lost touch with each other. <laughs> not, a, not a person who steals your CDs, but you just lose contact, and you go, damn, I wish I hadn't done that because it's so rare to find... The picture of this album between the most hateful men I'd ever met was uh, oh, in go. the background. It's them holding a kitten. Seth Putnam. Yeah, here's a song called "Women: Nature's Punching Bag." So do you, you've heard uh, "Great Southern Trend Kill" by Pantera. Well, who has it? Yeah, Pantera, yeah. He, yeah, he's the scream in "Great Southern no. Trend Kill." Yeah, That's yeah, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on, on the opening track. Yeah, on the opening track. And that's like the most close to. You guys are making it difficult. I don't know about that. Now you're starting to make me angry, McGruff. heavier metal. You were already into metal. It was new know. metal. It was radio more Parish. friendly metal, but... I don't give a fuck. It was the aggression of All Shall Parish and like... But... Man, everybody gets into metal differently, man. Just because you weren't exposed to it at a younger age and got into it at a time. The fact is, like, <laughs> in, at some point in your life, just like me as a, a, a three or four year old little boy here and, you know, Slayer for the first time from my uncle and falling in love with that sound, you heard that sound that heavy sound and you went i like that there's no disagreement with it your mind clicked and said whoa that's something i want to hear more of i know now that i know this is here there's more of it I'll i'm gonna you. find that like you gravitated toward it so i mean how people become metalheads doesn't matter my that's dude so my favorite album they've I'm ever sure. done is seasons the in the abyss and i still I listen to it to this day, and it's t to me, it's better than most albums. That I like I Shona have. Mercy. Yeah, dude, I like, like Shona Mercy. I yeah. mean, dude, I, I like a lot of old Haunting Slayer, Chapel, but I mean, yeah. for some reason, dude, Season of the Abyss just hits me, man. Like, that that's the one for me. But like, I tell a lot of people all the time, like, when it comes to when it comes to metal, man, like, 
Like I and I did it too. I was that guy. I was that guy too. Samters. Dude, um, you weren't into black metal. That's the mo- most like snobby shit right no, there. No, but you remember <laughs> what, when, when I was growing up, like most people at some point, man, like you think your opinion's right and you know what you're Absolutely. talking about. And, you know, I walked around forever just like everyone else, like, fuck Five Finger Death Punch or whoever it was. Like, I mean, well, I still don't really like them. That was a bad example. Okay, here you go. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, I'm not bad mouthing anybody, album. man. Whatever. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. just, it's just, you, you like who you like and you don't like who you like. But that's your personal opinion. I mean, everything has a reason it got there. And if it gets somebody into more metal and they find what they truly love, then that's what matters, dude. So the, that's what matters to me, anyway. I Would think, you say angry? I cut you off. I think everybody listens to the first five Death Punch album. Oh, and yeah, then, uh, I'm not crapping on them, man. No like, one openly about it admits earlier. it. No, I openly no admit openly it. I like that first it. album, dude. That second song in there, Heavy as Fuck. Yeah. I enjoy it. I the, the whole album was great. It's just after that, was, uh, I don't know. I don't like the surge. Yeah. I apologize a little bit. My yeah. voice, man. You know, I think from coughing so much from the sick. There's a lot of great bands out there that uh, like, I thought I was a metalhead because I was into Corn when I was growing up. Hey, I definitely the the first Dude, self-titled every, I, album. I listened that, to Corn growing up. That was boom, that was an boom, important boom, album. Yeah. Right, right, right. The self-titled. Oh, yeah. It was pretty cool. Uh, I don't really, I never got into new metal too much, but whenever I listen to new metal, it always takes me back to 2000, like the year 2000, like yeah. when WCW was still around, <laughs> when I was Fish eating off. Slim Jims. Cool, 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 yeah. Snapping into them, too. Yeah, yeah dude, snapping. you were snapping right into yeah. Slim Jim. Randy Savage was telling you to. Yeah. You know, were you going to argue with him? It was a different, no different way. era. You know, N64. No way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, macho, man. Hey, no, let's Rest stop. We we talk about a whole other podcast. We talk about N sixty four games. And they don't know about Macho like that, though. dude. I I know about Macho. Ooh, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I I can say that I might be the only person in this room that has watched Macho Man and versus Savage in the past <laughs> few days. <laughs> like, McGruff's Red. a dork. Did anybody else go Red NWO? Or did they stay with the original Hollywood and shit like the WCW <laughs> shit? Like I was all about the Wolf Pack, even when Conan was there. Oh yeah, man! I don't I think I ever Wolfpack. picked sides, man. I like individuals. I was real big on people, but I think at that time when NWO started going crazy, like oh. just to trail off before we get absolutely out of the metal. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I was just like, <laughs> this is I was completely out of. Uh, yeah, like just, I, I just, I just couldn't follow. Just that focus whole on thing. the 3D Doritos. Yeah, yeah, the 3D Doritos. Let's think about those. For Malcolm me. in the middle. Oh, I yeah, right. Don't you miss the 3D Doritos? You you ate them while you listened to them. I don't miss the Doritos. I miss the I miss the air in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's you get funny. It. <laughs> uh, you I don't, don't miss the Doritos. I miss the air in the middle. Yeah, that's what I miss. <laughs> oh man, that's you know good. So about. so angry. What you been listening to this week? No, honestly, I just can't get off this wolf heart. Uh, and I didn't say wolf heart. The wolf, wolf heart. Oh, dude. Uh, he actually no, turned that on to me. I will leave a copy here for you guys. What is? It's metal. I mean, it's it's metal. I just started, I'll let Angry Gordon here. And I cannot stop listening. It's one man from uh, Poland, and he writes everything: lyrics, drums, guitar. Uh, there's even a fan, uh, cello, I believe it's called. Uh, I don't know if he does that or not, but it's pretty wicked. It kind of but, uh, I can't get enough of that. And as we were talking earlier, like you hear something, it's just so powerful. There's something you hear about it, and it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's so powerful. They have. It's very atmospheric. It's the only man. time I've ever epic. heard a band with a flute. How, how long have they been out? A few, a few years. Um, they're not. They're not ancient, but a few years out. Yeah, maybe two, three albums, maybe. Yeah. It's good. Uh, I got I got like the I most recent on one. YouTube. Yeah, I saw it on YouTube too. It, it actually reminded me of like crusading music. Anybody else? Is that wrong? Well, like, uh, well, it's very like, epic. It's very atmospheric, epic, man. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah it's very big. Okay. You know, like played like an army marching. Comparable to Cohen. Yeah. Are, are we getting to the point where we're starting to do samples? Half a shit. Like, I mean, if you want to play a sample of it, man. I don't mind. Let's. I mean, let's see what. Oh man, where do you go? Let's see. Uh... <laughs> You. you can't really play a sample of it, though. Well, I mean, you know, I, 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 to, I, got, I, I got, believe every I got song the has the intro. Well, okay. What's the best song after the <laughs> intro? And, like, maybe we'll skip two minutes into it or something. Like, I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to get the best part. You're making it difficult, and you're slowing us down. 
is what I'm saying. You guys are making it difficult. I'm I'm I, I don't know about that. Now you're thinking. starting to make me angry, McGruff. Zero gravity. Zero gravity right here. Yeah. So you can get an idea of what we're talking about. It can't be bad. I haven't found a bad song about it yet. That's the only reason I suggest it. We're sampling it now. Yeah, go ahead. Sample it. No, I, I've heard them called different well, things. Uh, yeah. Well, be quiet. Someone tried to call them black metal. Be quiet. We're sampling it. Automatically, I love the drum set. Oh, it's yeah. Massive. I think it's something Crusades. definitely for you, man. Crusades. A pretty good idea of what you're talking about now. Yeah, it's definitely something, oh, no. man. That like, like Wolfhard, like I, I had to check man. it out. Yeah, dude, it's good. Like I said, uh, if you want it, I got it. I'll I'll, uh, I'll leave a copy here for you guys to check out. You know. So you said all what, recommendations. If you like the them, man, I always support again? the artist, though. You know, pick them Where's up. the guy from again? Uh, would you say Poland? Uh, sure. I love those one man black yeah. metal things like that, like Zoster yeah. and Leviathan and stuff. Oh man, I dig those. I guess he was in several other bands. Uh, I'm very surprised that I never heard of these other bands either. Just, they're, they're all great bands. I feel like lately, like in the past, like a uh, few years, there's been such an influx. Like, like I'm grateful for that the metal's got so wide a variety that we get so much of it now, and it's just at our fingertips. It's really something. Yeah. I honestly, think we should be grateful for. Well, but that's the point. That's the point of metal homework, man. Yeah. We're all gonna think. Just, just like, get a like, bag like, of weed. And what, get what, what did Peter mention earlier? Sleep. I think we also check that out. A big key oh, right there. Check, check it out. We're all, all yeah, checking it out. Especially with the backstory. Like yeah, that? Like, like, come on. What do you do? What do you do? Do you just go, hey, that sounds good, back to something else? No, man, you check it out. Like, seriously, the the whole, you know, buying a bunch of weed, LSD, and amplifiers, and making a fucking album, that sounds like something I probably would have done about five years ago. Absolutely. Yeah, they, uh... They played ACL Live, not at the festival, but like they do a, a videotaping thing for PBS, and they played, and that whole building, it was the Moody Theater, they started playing, and the whole foundation was shaking. It was just so heavy. They had, uh, Al Cisneros had six sun stacks behind them, and then Matt Pike had, I think it was like six orange half stacks, and then six Marshall half stacks, and uh, it was just a wall of sound. It was, the whole building was just wobbling. And it got super, super low and fat and heavy. Nice. Yeah. So we still got angry here listening to the Wolf Heart. So uh, I think I got a good idea. But what have you been listening to metal wise? Like you said, uh, there's one comedy group. Yeah. That not a lot of people know called Crotch Duster, and it's uh, Corey was his name from the the rhythm guitarist from Trivium. Ooh. Oh, and, oh, yeah. Hey. Really? That's a, that's a and story. it is a concept album that makes absolutely no sense. Okay. And it's all about them being obsessed with this mammal sauce that they get from this guy named Williams who runs a circus. And that's sort of the only plot I've been able to sort of discern from it. But it's really just a whole bunch of songs where it just switches into blast beats and stuff and black metal. And then it'll just go right back to synthesizers and goofiness. Oh, right it's, on. It's it's really well done. So and what's that called again? Crotch Duster. All right, we'll check that out. And uh, you checked out from last week. You said you checked out the White Zombie. All of them. I, yeah. Creed two thousand absolutely. Between and Barrett and Me Colors. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Dude. Album. I believe it was two thousand twelve. Uh no, two thousand seven. Seven. Damn, yeah. Ten years. Wow. Yeah. Ten no. Anyways. Tenth anniversary tour. I'm going to it this October. If you would have heard the entire like all. Seven, eight tracks of it or whatever. I can't even. It's ten. Uh, it's, it's uh, I think it's nine oh, total. Nine. Okay. I know it was like a, a awkward number, but like yeah. hearing the entire thing, just like the Faith No More new album, like hearing the entire thing just gives you a new new respect for it and shit. So, I oh, yeah. it might not have been a sign, but like I think I might have to actually give Slayer another chance for real with the the rain and blood. I absolutely one, two, four, think five. you should, man. Check out Seasons in the Abyss, man. Yeah. Seasons well, dude, in the Abyss. Seriously, like, and I, I've, I've given seen, it the hand slap. I've only seen a few crowds go completely wild for very certain songs. But, yeah, Raining Blood, that is by far the wildest mosh pit I've ever witnessed. I, I came out bleeding. I was crowd surfing in mosh into in flames, and I didn't come out of that bleeding. And I know it's not, like, the same kind of heavy. but Yeah, I was about to say, in flames is good. But and not, they were so fun live. They were so fun. Uh, oh, it was yeah. so good.
This was uh, May. I recently just seen them too, and I'll have to say that was the loudest concert I've seen ever. Aren't they just ridiculously loud, man? And like people don't know, man, but they're just they're just so fun to watch. Like it's like watching like a garage band play like excitingly for a large crowd of people the first time. It's good. Well, they definitely had that trouble turned up to eleven. Uh, I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, it's the first time I've ever complained about a concert. They're like, "Oh, it's too loud." It it hurt my ears. It oh, was too so loud. No, they didn't bother me that bad. I thought they sounded great. I thought they were just loud and in charge of it. It was very loud. Uh, maybe it's just me getting older, but I think so. Wow! Oh, uh, in flames. Look, they, man, they, he this guy they here that throne is the loudest band I've seen. Ever. Look, I know we should be wrapping up real quick, but I'm going to be honest with you. This guy told me right here back in April, he's like, man, you can go see Amon and Marth. Terrible. It was bad. It wasn't good. I was all worried. I was like, man, I've been so excited. Dude, what the hell? Pursuit of Vikings? Why? This can't happen. This can't happen to me, guys. I, I was one of the reasons I'm going as Amon and Marth. Viking metal? I was excited. And I get to get there, I refuse to believe it. I see him on a Marth. They fucking kill it. It's yeah. one of the goddamn greatest shows of the whole thing. I'm sitting there the whole time yeah, like, bro. I'm supposed to trust this asshole. He's telling me I'm on a Marth's bad. But then at the same but time, as my, but that's it. Yeah, at the yeah. same time, he's like, man, yeah, Goat Horde was there. You know, I listen to some Goat Horde. It's good. So I download, check yeah. out the new Goat Horde album, pick it up when it comes out, buy it. Oh, fucking yeah. great. And no, it's a great <laughs> album. So he's like right about the goat whore, but he's absolutely wrong about the Mon and Marth. I'm like, man, I don't know what to think anymore. Like my head's hurting about it. He's like, oh, you're going to hate it. It's terrible. It's bad. I see Mon and Marth. I'm all fucking on the crowd surfing with my horns in the sky. Raise them up. I was ready to go. Here he is talking. Uh, it, it reminded me that I've seen Lamb of God open up for Slipknot. When Slipknot came out, I was just like, what? Why, why yeah, you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I remember that, dude. We saw Lamb of God on Ashes of the Wake touring for Slipknot, dude. They come out and played half them Ashes of the Wake songs, dude. Then Slipknot came out. And I'd already seen Slipknot twice. And I was like, man, you guys want to go back and get a pizza and yeah. kind of hang out and get some drinks? I was like, and I was like, it's not that just Slipknot's bad. It's just, I'm ready to lay down. Like, I was ready for bed, dude. It was like, you know, it was like after she grinds it and you're done, you just don't want to keep going. You can't put Lamb of God before Slipknot, and you can't put Goat Whore before a Mars. You know? I guess There's that makes you sense. can't do. I saw Pantera before White Zombie. That's the only one that made sense. White Zombie, but not Rob Zombie. No, fuck no, not yeah. Rob Zombie. Regular. And that's not me being non judgmental. I just don't. I'm, Pantera should not, uh, would not open for Rob Zombie. It would be, it would be asinine and stupid. <laughs> Well, the Pantera opening for White Zombie in like nine, a, and then like the late nineties or mid nineties was actually sense. very sensible. Yeah. That metal festival that had Def Leppard at opening a metal show. I left before them. I watched so I could see like you know them jam out and the one arm drummer play. But then I was like, man, I'm really gonna beat traffic. Like, and it wasn't anything against Def Leppard. I just really wanted to beat traffic. It was like mid of the festival, yeah. you know, and I just got done watching Corn, and I'm not a huge Corn fan anymore. But watching that, you know. They're always spectacular live, man. They're just a good show. Good live, good live. A lot of fun. Yeah. Hair metal is a guilty pleasure of mine. It's a guilty pleasure. Yeah, that's yeah. that's just it, man. You enjoy it, you go wow. That, you know, and like I remember being a kid and this being really cool. And yeah. then you watch them live, man, and they don't play like anything off any album from the past six <laughs> years. They're just like, hey, it's all this stuff you like, you know. And everyone's like cheering and singing along, and then they leave and they make money doing it. So hey, you know, kudos to them. This is talking about Death Leopard. <laughs> no, I just, no I, they were after Corn. <laughs> What? <laughs> he was talking about that, yeah, and I left. That's a weird choice. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, well, that's okay. Sometimes lost. the headliner just don't make sense. They don't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was talking about the headliner being that, like, corn, then Def oh. Leppard. He just thinks it should have been opposite. Not to one up and shit, but the worst one Whoa. I've ever seen in my life is when I saw Neurosis live. It was for Awake, which is this, like, sludge band. Pretty good. And then they had this band. It was supposed to be I Hate God, but he was getting a liver transplant at the time. So he dropped out, and they dropped in uh, Pain Teens. It was some, like, mid-'80s, post-punk, like, garbage band. And it was, like, live journals about her being raped, pretty much, by her dad. Oh, that's And them playing, like, this... Inappropriate. This, like, yeah. alt-rocky type of R.E.M. stuff under it. And then Neurosis. <laughs> it was just the weirdest wow. setup. <laughs> yeah, she, she started a song wow. and came out, and they were playing this like 
David Lynchy sounding type of soundtrack, and she goes, "Daddy, Daddy, is that you? Is that you coming in my room? <laughs> this, that, the other, and like reading off her like poetry about her dad molesting her." While she was playing over this like noise rock, I'm gonna 80s. be judge judgmental about it. I don't like it. It wasn't even know. metal, so you can judge the <laughs> fuck out of it. Yeah, I'm gonna judge the hell out of it. I don't like it. And then neurosis, who was amazing. Things that are metal. Oh. Murder, kind of metal. Rape, not metal. No, yeah, not yeah. metal at all. Let's just we're on the, not metal at we're all. On the opinion, uh, except on the for the mental here that it is not metal. It's not good. Yeah, it's not. You want to speak about killing people? That's pretty damn metal. That's kind of metal, man, you know. Well, I mean, Brutality is metal. Talking about yeah, hot talking about it, you know? Mass annihilation is pretty brutal. That's so. pretty metal. I mean, you know, you can't stop it. Now, what is a metal is what you're talking about here. That's Thank definitely you. one of them. So, probably worst opener I ever had for corn and stained. Mindless self indulgence. Mm, what? Yeah, you had to watch mindless, mindless self indulgence. Why? They come out and play yeah. bitches, and you were like, "I don't ever want to see this again." <laughs> Dude, and I want to lay down and get sick. Their vocalist reminded me of a transvestite carrot top. It was just terrible. Yeah. It's that's just a really bad choice for pairing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, stained. Because <laughs> corn, when I seen them, it was right when uh, issues had come out, so they hadn't really gone too far into what they had gotten into. You so know, it wasn't all the, all the members were still in the band. Uh, I didn't. I did yeah, not exactly. like that record. I know you they probably did didn't like, like it, but like still, it. you got to think they it only had that bad. record and then the Ooh. other three to play from. So you got to think the set list was probably the best you could get. I better get shoes than that. That's all I'm saying. I saw them on oh, the. I saw absolutely. them when they did the Untouchables, and they were they played pretty good. Okay. I, I can't crap on them live, man. They no, they, they a play good a good show. show. They good play a good show. show. So their guitarist is still you gone. Talk about great, band the one that like wake that you, What now? You guys are talking about bands that you. You guys are talking about bands that you're like, oh yeah, they were bad bands. But when I left a modern march, I was angry, okay? <laughs> you guys like, oh, that was bad. Dude, because uh, he I just... I was mad. Like, well, look at this. Like, uh, go ahead and explain it to us, because when we did this the first time, he could not explain why. Right. So please. Don't interrupt him. Just let him go. I'll just go. Please. Back. Please. Angry. Why was the modern march? Oh, Why'd right. you leave mad? Give it to us. Why were they bad? Yeah. Go over there. Okay. Uh, story. Somebody hit Max. Put away. This is judgmental because he told me this the day after, and he was like, "That eh, sucks, man. You go see you go see Amon and Marth, and yeah, I'm gonna tell you, man. I don't know." And then I go see him, and I'm like, "You're fucking nuts. Dude. You're fucking nuts. I just seen them. They were drinking tankards of mead on stage. They yeah. they were standing on a bow of a Viking ship. I got a video on YouTube of the performance. I mean, he I do have angry. Oh, I have to, I... Yeah, he left angry." I have to bracket it and say I will give the critics a little bit of wiggle room because it is sort of LARP metal. I agree. I mean, yeah. Agreed. It's a little yeah. silly, but I love it. Like, yeah, man. Gim- dude, if it's a gimmick too. and it's that's fun, I like the theatrics, man. I like musicals. I like that kind of thing. I like, I like a production. Maybe that's what it was. I didn't feel as if I was surrounded by the metal community. You might have... That's what I told you. I said that the day before. I said, man, like, look, and I'm not insulting by no means the military, by no means individual men and women. But he went in, in a military town, and a lot of those people, man, sometimes are just looking for stuff to do. They're not metalheads. So they're going to the show, so they're I not think, gonna be the community of, of love, love and support that metalheads give. And I just feel like he didn't have as much fun there because he wasn't in a group like I was at at the metal show, right. where I was surrounded by fucking 5,000 Amon and Marth fans that wanting to pick me show, up yeah. and go, hey, let's get closer to Amon and Marth. They're drinking mead, have a shot of whiskey, friend. Like that's the community I was in, and he's standing in a in a military town. People are kind of being dicks. I don't think I've ever been at a middle show and not smoked weed, and I, that would probably definitely kill you. You have fun, man. You party. It's a good time. It's what you do. And, and I don't think he was in that situation. Was, I think he was the only the one there people. doing that, and there was nobody people helping him. Nobody was helping him enjoy I, the community. I feel like a second chance is in order. Yeah, you got to see him on a Marth again, or you're a Maybe dick and you're case. judgmental.
I appreciate you showing up. Yeah, glad to be here. Awesome. So that's been Non Judge Metal. I guess we'll see you next time.